Good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your busy work week to come join us for our SIP and Art event. This is going to be a fun evening. You're going to learn about Chinese calligraphy. And on top of it, you'll also be able to experience it firsthand yourself. So I'm very excited about introducing Grace Xu. I know her very well. She's my mom. Um, my mom has um, always impressed upon me since growing up that it's really important to embrace your Asian identity and your heritage. And she's done an amazing job of that throughout my childhood. She's also been very passionate about sharing her knowledge of Chinese culture to the community. I just wanna give you a little bit of my mom's background. She was born in China and throughout her childhood and young adult life, she's lived in Taiwan and Hong Kong. She immigrated to the United States to New York to attend grad school and eventually ended up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here in Albuquerque, she really is impassioned to share her knowledge of Chinese culture. She's done things from teaching Chinese culture and history classes at UNM Continuing Education. She's led educational visits to China through, again, continuing ed at UNM for nursing students and artists. Um, she is also the only certified court interpreter in the state of New Mexico for Chinese dialects. And she also has a passion for calligraphy, which she'll be teaching you about tonight. My mom's been studying Chinese calligraphy since the age of five. And as an adult, she's also returned back to China during summers to even further her studies more. And in addition, she's also won a gold medal at a Japanese international calligraphy contest. My mother, in addition, has also taught Chinese language here within the Albuquerque High School system. And most recently, she's been having a lot of joy doing private lessons, teaching Chinese calligraphy and Chinese language um, to various students. So sit back and enjoy this evening and have some fun. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, my daughter, to introduce me. And thanks to uh, University of New Mexico Health Science Center to have this uh, op opportunity for me to introducing Chinese culture and the Chinese cal calligraphy and share the information with you people here on campus. And also this evening, everybody is off work and thanks to Jose and thanks to Maggie and uh, for helping out. So what we would like to talk about the writing language of Chinese. Uh, uh, the, the, yes, we're talking about the Chinese art of calligraphy. Now it's a sense of movement to, to connect the brush on the paper and goes different movements, fast or slow, stop or go on and to make the beauty of the lines. And also whatever the paper you have in front of you, you have a frame structure to have the space, idea of the space. And uh, about Chinese writing system, we here just review a little bit what we talk about on Wednesday. It's Fuxi, it started with the Bagua, the eight trigram. And uh, it's showing on the screen. And heaven, earth, lake, mountain, fire, water, wind, and thunder. And later on, the Feng Shui masters use that a lot to, to judge the harmony of the qi of the nature and doing that. And uh, Chang Jie is the next one started to do the or origin and the construction of Chinese character. Now, there are different scripts of Chinese calligraphy. There's still script early in the beginning and then clerical script script and then regular script and the Samic cursive script and cursive script. It's starting, the seal script started like a, almost 2000 BC ago. And then in Tang Dynasty, it's in the 600 to 800 AD and started to have standard and clerical and regular at the same time. And later on, it moves to cursive and develop. This evening, we are going, you are going to learn, and we share together to do the, to do the job with seal script 
and clerical script and regular script and the cursive script. We're going to do all those four. Now, the fifth and the, uh, the fourth and the fifth is about the same, but just one is more cursive than that. So we're going to do four. Now, Chinese is a language for eyes. It, it doesn't have alphabets. We use strokes, basic strokes, and they're basic strokes. And I'm going to talk a little bit later, just so you have basic. And then stroke order to write a Chinese character, just like in English, you spell it in alphabets. You want it in the right order. In Chinese, when it comes to writing, you want to pay attention to the order of the strokes. Now, Chinese radicals. Chinese language based on radicals. When we look up dictionary, you use you use um, uh, radicals to find the word. For example, lots of radicals, lots of uh, uh, characters were based on the radical of water. So it's three dots. That's water. So to name it, river, stream, brook, ocean, or Chinese characters will have that three dots related to water, okay? And also wood, it's a, a like a cross, but with the two branches coming, sticking out, that's Chinese radical for wood. When it comes to any tree, pine tree, um, willow tree, any tree names, it was started based on the wood radical. Now, when we write a character, you have to, sometimes there are three components or three parts of a character, or sometimes they even have four. You have to proportion them well so they look balanced. And it, when you try to write Chinese character, if you write on a white paper, you have to use your imagination to see the space where you will place the character in the center of the uh, paper. Okay. Now, here I want you to quickly to introduce some of the great Chinese cal calligraphers. Now, um, start in the very early days, there's Wang Xi Zhi, and he is a Chinese calligrapher, a writer, and politician. He is the most well known. Chinese, they call him sage of calligraphy. And to his uh, portrait, the second illustration from the left is the, a, a very famous piece that he wrote that's called Preface to the Orchid Pavilion. That was during the late springtime, he was having a great party along the a little stream and drinking a little bit as writing uh, Chinese calligraphy. That's probably this evening. That's most of you are doing, drinking a little bit, enjoy yourself and write calligraphy. So that's the piece, very well known. And his hometown, he was born close to, not far from Shanghai. The city is called Shaoxing. And I had the... Uh, uh, chance to visit his hometown. Very nice place. And uh, he is well known, especially the running script. The second from right, that's what it is. Okay. The second one I want to introduce is uh, Yan Zheng Qing. He's a Chinese uh, calligrapher, a military general, and a scholar. When kids in elementary school started to learn Chinese calligraphy, they have copy books made, just like, you know, for, for young kids to learn alphabets in the States, you have copy book, they have copy uh, things to do. He has the most copy books made after 
after his death. And so all the school kids started to learn him first. That's the calligrapher I learned first from. Okay. The second one I introduced as Liu Gongquan. And uh, at the age of 29, he won the first place in civil exam. That's nationwide. That's a great honor. So now he wrote all besides of Wang Xizhi, the first one, Yan Zhengqing and him and the next one, they're all Tang Dynasty calligraphers. And remember that time we talk about the journey to the West, the Chinese monk brought Monkey King and, and the other two will go to India. So, and so Liu Gongquan is the one doing a lot of his calligraphy work on India Sutra, so Heart Sutra. So the very first on the right hand side, the, the, the uh, slide that's showing, that's what his style of writing. And this is Zhao Mengfu. Now, this, he is a descendant of the imperial family because he was born in the year in the Yuan Dynasty, a Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty, the last name is Zhao. So, and uh, he is not only a calligrapher, but uh, a painter as well. His favorite subject is horse. He did a lot of painting on horse besides calligraphy. So I want to show you. So remember that there's some other artists very famous for you know, drawing the horse, but he's one of them. And then this is an emperor in Song Dynasty. We talk about he is the one. And he's a great painter, poet, and calligrapher. He was the one started to establish an imperial academy to teach, to collect all the wonderful artists come to the capital and they study and share uh, art, the work, their artwork. And he is the one invented slender gold style of calligraphy. Do you see that? It's so different from the other calligraphers. His is very slender, not bold strokes. Look at this, study the strokes, especially the sweeping uh, uh, strokes from upper right to the left, you see some strokes. On the upper one, you see the second character from the right. You see on the left hand side, it's, there's a stroke line, very slender not using too much that. And look at the bottom one. And everything is very slender. So he's well known. Now for ch Chinese calligraphy, it's very special. Well, very special. You go to any museum in the States, uh, you could see some Chinese uh, calligraphy being exhibited. And in, in the homes, family homes, people not only have uh, paintings to display on the wall. Also, typically, they will have calligraphy displayed on the wall too. Now here we talk about uh, the middle one is my work, is my work, I did that. You know, it's a, it's a cursive style to do that. There are four treasures of the studio. The writing brush, um, yeah, you see on the back of the box, there's the writing brush and then paper. And they didn't sh uh, show the paper there. It's the rice paper and then ink stone and ink stick. Now, writing brush was uh, invented in 200 AD, but paper was earlier than that almost 200 years earlier than that in China. So they have that. 
for ink stone, and you, they use beautiful stone, carved it, and so you could ground your ink on it. And ink stick, that's you use it, a stick, and you ground ink on the ink stone. So you have liquid turn into ink water to do that. Oh. So, uh, so you have uh, that. So when Amy Tain's work, The Bone Settler's Daughter, I don't know, some of you may have read it. So, and he, she came to Albuquerque to talk, a, to give a talk on the book, The Bone Settler's Daughter. And I went to, 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 his, to her talk. And in the book, it talked about the ink, Chinese ink stick. So I thought, wow, she knew a lot about ink stick. I'd like to exchange some information with her because luckily I was in China. I visited ink stick factories, several factories. It's located, the town is called Shexian, located at the base of the very well-known mountain. If you later on had a chance or you did have the chance to visit Huangshan Yellow Mountain, it's at the base of the Yellow Mountain and they have. So I asked Amy Tang, I say, where did you visit? And I would like to know, she said, You did better than I do. I didn't visit any factory. I just from internet and co co collect all the information. So, so techniques and the training. Um, so we're going to talk about to do the uh, brush handling, brush movement and postures. Okay. So I'm going to sh show you just a little bit about when you're doing calligraphy, there, you pay attention to techniques and gradually you'll be trained to feel comfortable to do this. First of all, when you sit preferable, you put your feet on the ground, shoulder width on the ground, not cross your legs, okay? And then relax your shoulder. And you should be about one or two inches away from the table, not leaning on the table. Okay, that's what's about. Yeah. So brush movement. When you do the brush, you let's see. According to the classic of, they talk about the brush. You have to hold the brush like the size you're going to write. You. You hold the brush like one third from the from the stem of the brush from bottom from bottom. Okay, you you hold it there, and your fingers. Remember four things you remember: fingers should be firm, hold the brush, and your fist should be hollow. You're not squeeze your fist. That's that's not right. Okay, so you should hollow. You hollow, yes, your fist hollow. And uh, your brush should be upright. So hold your brush upright. Now, when we have a tendency, when you write, you write, people would do this. When you come down, you come down like this. No. You have to hold your brush and carry it with you. See that? You have to carry it with you. So fingers firm, ho a fist hollow, brush upright, and your wrist should be try to do a level. Okay? Try to do a level. So you feel the strength coming from your, actually from your shoulder, from your back spine to your shoulder and your elbow and wrist and then reach your reach your finger, and then to the tip of the brush. So, and um, the basic strokes, I want to, we will try some basic strokes. When, 
children started to learn calligraphy in China, they would use this kind of paper with nine grids. We call we call Jiu Gong Ge. These nine grids to to do it. So there's different terms for the uh, uh, calligraphy. First for brush. Now, for those you have your own brush, if it's being used, it's great. You just have to dip in the water a little bit. If it's used, okay? Just a little bit. And then you squeeze out that. And if you like, you could use a paper towel to get the water liquid out of it. But remember, always from the stem to the tip. So you will not brush the uh, hair in the, in the wrong way. So you do this way. And then you dip in that. Now, if you have a, a brand new brush, and while we're talking, you probably please soak it in hot water and, uh, and see whether it's use hot water and, and to feel the softness and then squeeze out the liquid as much as you can, then you could do it. Usually the proper way is to grinding the ink, but it would take a lot of time and also it will um, to collect the right amount of ink uh, to do the calligraphy. So um, if it's a, so when it comes to competition or something, people like to use brown ink, but usually we could use just liquid ink to do that. Okay, so to, to ground it. And um, so let's try a little bit. And so you dip your, 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 let me show you how to do that. You dip your ink, it's ideally in two rotating position. You rotate your brush up and front, up and front, back and forth, or, and then also in circular. The brush is this way and you, your, your fingers move them this way, but the, your fist is moving them in a circular movement. Look, it's just the tip. You don't want the whole brush to, this depends upon the size of your brush. If you have a big brush, you probably just half of it, you have soaked with the liquid ink. And then if you have a smaller brush, you could soak it in more ink with it. So now when we write, when we write, the basic stroke will be a hung. Hung means horizontal line. So when you write a hung, I would just use this paper, write a big. Okay. I would like you to try it, but before that, let me tell you the trick. It's not supposed this way. You're writing it like this and this. And uh, could we have the last slides, please? Thank you. Now, yes, look at the, 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 the very far right one, the very far right one. The, that's in showing everything mixed up in pinyin and uh, Wade Giles. It's, so, dun means to push down. Ti means lift up, and then na, we're going to na later, but ti, okay? So, thank you. So, this is, you do it, you do it this way, ti, 
And then you go, good, and you just go, 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 go to the end. And you circle the movement clockwise and turn back. Okay, would you like to try it? And be happy with what you Okay. No, no laughing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's try one more time. Okay. Then this one. And then comes we would there's a thought. You can have clockwise thought. That means you gently touch the the paper and then you do it, means press down and then clockwise and coming back. Okay. And then we have, I just think of you. And then shu. That means you go vertical line. By the same token, please. See that? Circular movement. And then dun, and then coming down. And then circular movement, and then dun means press down. This is the way. Okay? Give it a try. That's vertical line. And then we have sweeping, sweeping stroke. So that's from upper right, you dun, you press down, and gently you lift the Brush and going down to the left, uh, to the lower left, from upper right to the lower left. Again, you, you always start it this way. Circular movement, dun, press down and gently lift the brush and going down. Okay, so another one is tiao. So it's counterclockwise. You push down and then going up. So look, press down and then gently, 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 gently move. So that's tiao, so different. And then there's a, there is a, Go, go is to do this way. You turn at the end, you press down and you kick up. There's a hook at the end, okay? And then there's another stroke is you turn around and going up. Turn around and dun, and then kicking up. Now, we, we, I want you to have some really some fun with hands-on experience. So just please remember this, this press down clockwise, turn around and then going down. That's here. Not pi, okay? It's pinyin, is a pa yi e pie. So that stroke we learn. And this is a hung. If all possible, please remember the name of for the stroke. Only three you need to learn. This is a hung. This one is a. Shu, that's shu, okay? That's vertical line. So you will be practicing this and you are going to have some fun, I hope. So the word I want you please to write is, you have a, okay. If you have a square, if you use square paper, 
and within this, you write the character that let me finish first and then you could follow by it. Okay. I would do it again and again. So up here. And then um, and then a longer hung. Um, And then you use pie and you use hung, and now you use stu. So, what's this character? I want you to, how many strokes, please? One, two, three, four. So we have pie. We have hung, and we have another longer hung, and we have shu, and this is this is a pronounced new. So new, can you try? I can't hear you, but you could try at home. Say new. That means ox or cow. You know new, and Chinese zodiac. Calendar according. This year is the year of new. Okay, so this is a year of new. So learn the four different scripts to write new, and then the basic you you could when you come to talk about your own piece of the artwork when you introduce to you say oh this is only four strokes, pie, hung, hung, and shu. Four strokes, and this is the character of new. This is a year of new. Okay, so so can we everybody uh, when you get it done? Could you show it on the screen? Let's see it, or you want to practice one more time? Show everybody. Be proud of what you have done. <laughs> okay, who who? Okay, Whoa, that's good, good, very good. Yeah. And then, very good, good. Oh, I see Andy there's too. Andy, how about yours? Show a new, good, good. No, I didn't see it. Okay, good, good. Try one more time. No rush, circular movement, second hung, counterclockwise, turn, and then go around, and then turn clockwise. Started with counterclockwise, ended with clockwise. New, okay, this is new. Now, We're going to try the seal script. That's the most ancient one, the style. And the way of to write the stroke will be different. This is what we learn right now is standard or clerical style. Nowadays, the newspaper printing is all this standard model, you know, this one. And we're going to do a seal one. If you have, have an imaginary space in the middle, okay, you do that. And now, I don't know why the evolution, the modern days, the new, we just wrote, lost one horn. But let's look at the seal script. How do they write it? Now, please look at me and then what I'm doing and then that. For new, you would do it. You do, for seal script, you don't have to turn that much. You do halfway and then
Okay, let me finish then. So that's the way. And then, and then a uh hung. And then the shu, stroke of shu. Remember this one? Shu, vertical line. So we do shu. So this is still. This is. Standard script. Okay, or model script, whatever. So now, you would like to try it? So start it from, imagine the space, and then you draw the horn, the two horns. That's the symbol, like pictures. The seal style is like pictures. So draw this and this, and the, so do this stroke first, and then do this one, draw the two horns and meet in the middle. That's the way to write seal script. Woo, somebody got it done. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so, so horns and then a horizontal line and then a vertical. So you see the bull with two horns coming up, okay? Anybody want to show us? Very good. Good. Remember, this stroke, you could, you have to be go through the head. Very good. But you could go long or short, that's fine. But show the horns. Let's see. Very good. I see that. Good, good. I like that. Wow, we have a young calligrapher learner. Good calligraphy learner. Very good. Andy, how about yours? Did you do it? Very good. Don't be modest. That's a very good one. Anybody else want to show? Yeah, meet in the middle and then doing that. Very good. Now we have we have two. And then and then we have clerical style. Imaginary four dots for you. Now, for clerical, for clerical style, the hung, there's always one hung. This hung, let me show you. This hung is. Actually, it's not level, and you could drop it anyway. That would be a hung. Give it a try. You write from thin, gradually press down the brush and to the end. Everybody give it a try. Okay. Want to show us, share with us. See, what did you do? Good, good. Very good. So now, yes, very good. Now let's try one with imaginary four dots. You're going to write a new now in clerical style. So you have a one pit, and then you have a hung, and then the second hung is 
more than, and then you have the shoe. So this is, a, Historical style, okay? So this is a, now we, we would do the three, three, uh, uh, three uh, different style of new. We did it, okay? We did the uh, new. Let me do one more on, on this vertical. Okay, so this is so we have new in standard and then in seal style and clerical style script, okay, or style. So did anybody finish a new to show us the clerical style? The heng is really wide at the end and then kick up. Oh, now the second line, I like Andy's. You, you, you have a big lump in the end and then kick up. Now, do not do not make it too even. It's not an even line. Try again. Try again and drop it a little bit and make it big. Not an even line, okay? Who else wants to give a try? You do very well proportion wise, and but the second hung, this one you need to drop down and getting bigger and kicking up. Give it a try again. You could do it. Okay. Are you, let me see it. Now, the last one we're going to do cursive. Very good. Good, good. The shoe is straight and then the heng is dropping down and kicking up. Very good. Now we do the last one is cursive. Cursive, when you do it, look at here, please. Okay. You move it quickly. From this one, because this is one, this is a number two stroke, this is number three stroke, this is number four. So you have to do one, two, three, four. Okay, give it a try. Okay, now the fun really begins. Good, good. The uh, Angie, the, I mean, the hung, the second line, the second line started a little bit longer than the, the, the second one started a little bit longer, yeah, longer than, than this. Good, good, very good, very good. Now it's fun. 
If you know somebody born the year the sign of a uh, ox, or this is the year of the ox. If you are short of Christmas gift, prepare early, practice your new, and then you could give out as Christmas gift. Let me show you how. Do you have a white paper? Start a new one. Whatever size you like. Just think, you will make it into four rectangular case. Now, let me show you how I fold it just in a minute. I use this. I don't know. Do you, yeah, you can hold the yeah. I fold it. I fold it. So we'll write four different new on one sheet of paper, four different styles. Now, the first one, the earliest one, who could remember? It's a seal script. So we'll do. Do we have the paper ready, everyone? So for your sample, you yourself wrote, I just try to remember, this is the earliest one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the earliest one, new, this one. So we're going to write this. On, oh, for Chinese writing, calligraphy, it's always up and down, right to left. So we'll say the upper right corner, we'll write the seal script, okay? Now, use the imagination, the space, your space, and put down new. So that's, you do this corner, upper right corner new. And the second one, the second block, you will use the um, clerical one, okay? To put down new, that's the Han Dynasty. We, we started with that new, okay. Somehow the ox lost one horn. But that's the way it goes. Now, when you watch me, the second one, remember. So now the third one, we're going to use the upper right corner. i wait for a few minutes. Maybe somebody would like to show us when you finish too. Good, good, okay. And uh, good, good, very good, yeah, okay. New, new. And then we have the standard one on the third corner.
Okay. Third one. Anybody finish want to show us? Okay, good try, good try. Okay, very good, very good. Now the last one is cursive. You could start it with that big one and then This concludes this evening's workshop and lecture, you know, and the presentation. So I hope you would try to write in, in paper and get, and you could have uh, your name signed in the middle. And uh, to make it more fun, you could in red, so like it's in the red pace, your job is working on it. So anybody have any questions or anything? Mrs. Shu, I just want to thank you. This has been such a extraordinary opportunity to get this experience and just with someone as knowledgeable as you. Thank you so much. It has been truly an eventful night. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope everybody enjoy it. Just remember the very basic thing, only four strokes and four different uh, characters from different dynasty and period of time. And you know, the name, even the name of the strokes, it's Pie, Heng, Heng, Shu, and that's it. I have a question. Yes. Um, why, uh, so, can they no, hear me? Just speak next Okay. Um, so for those of you, uh, I'm actually in the room, um, thankfully. And I have a question about, um, we, I'm, was given a piece of um, felt to draw on. And I was wondering what the felt does, like what's the oh, purpose? Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you for asking. In China, when I studied there, they use a wool pad uh, made of wool. And I thought, wow, it's kind of expensive too. I thought the felt just works the same. So you go to the fabric shop, you do that because the ink will go through the paper and get your table dirty. Which I just did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a felt will really help. So at home, you might invest a, a felt. You don't need to have a big piece. And uh, I have some smaller pieces cut up, you know, where you practice at home, you use some smaller piece of felt. And then I do have another question. Yes. Um, so, uh, just in case anybody else was interested in, in finding materials, um, I, I went to Hobby Lobby and uh, it, I got these brushes that are not very good at all. Um, and so I was wondering, these are beautiful brushes um, that uh, Grace brought in with her. And I was wondering if there's a good, if you know, like a place to get. I think Artisan. Artisan? Okay. Yeah, they even give UAM employees discount. So it probably is good to, if you want to practice, you don't want to ruin your table service, invest in a piece of felt and then to, to, to do it. Mrs. Shu, um, there was a question from Andrew about left handed. Um, if there's any techniques um, for left handed people, there's several of us at my house that are left handed. And it looks like Andrew also um, is left-handed or has family members. Is there a, a, a technique that could help us be, um, with the, the calligraphy style a little bit better? Excuse me. Yeah. Yes, I can. Yes. Do you have any techniques for people using their left? Sorry, Andy, just the connection here is a little bit hard to hear. So I'm just going to tell my mom what you said. So the question was, do you have a technique to help left-handed people to write calligraphy? Sorry, Andy, the connection. Yes. That's okay. I'm you know what? This is a very good question. 
Really great question. Let me tell you, I started a few decades ago. A lawyer came to me for calligraphy class, and she was left-handed. She asked me, Grace, I'm left-handed, Quadra. I say, well, would you like to give a try of uh, 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 with the, your use your right hand? Because for Chinese writing, their words. Let me show you just quickly and doing that. As you see this character I just did, it's a character, it's a symbol of country or hometown. Do you see one, two, three components? Where do I start? It's from left to right. So if I'm right-handed, then I could see the proportion and the placement of the component, the part. So I write this part, it, it's in front of me that I write this. But if I'm left-handed, I write this part, then it cover up. I have no idea. Move on to the middle one then. So that just not suit for the purpose of writing calligraphy. Because in this character, for Chinese characters, there are several components. Usually the rule is from left to right. It's, I hope you know, they, they would think of oh, a left-handed person, probably right to left. So with that lawyer, I say, I say, would you like to consider to, to write with your right hand? I explained the reason. And then, and then she said, she'll give a try. She said, if I don't want to try, what will I do? I say, Linda, I'm sorry. You just have to find another teacher. So, and right now, actually, I have uh, twin girls learning from me, from calligraphy from me. Actually, they're in Rhode Island and we're doing this FaceTime. One of the girl is left-handed, but I don't want to surprise the family. I want it, it's an open channel. So I told the mother, I say, I explained to her, I said, do you mind? Let's give it a try if Amy could try when she writes Chinese, not calligraphy, just any characters, she will use right hand and give it a try and see whether it's too much. If it's too much, I, I, I think, you know, it, it would be hard to do it. And you know what? We, I have some assignment for them to do. And the next time Amy brought eyes, I could do it with right hand. So I could write left hand in English, right hand, in Chinese, so you could do that, okay? Give it a try, because I hate to say, when it, if people promise you, oh, you use left hand, you will promote, you will have create your own barrier when it comes to more than this new noble problem. It's up and down in the center, left hand person, all right. But when it comes to a more complicated word, you, you can, there's no way you could do it. So good question. Well, enjoy. Don't stop here and okay, write new, really good. Practice these four and you could write in round shape and fold it in four and so it will be four different news. And then you could do any shape you want to and share with your family. And that would be a unique gift thing. So I think I want to thank you, everybody. Friday evening should be, you know, other things to do. And here you spend time with me and give me this opportunity to share information with you. So thank you so very much There's for everything. Oh, yes. 
I went to Hobby Lobby too, but I got pens instead because we couldn't find one of those paintbrushes and we got rice paper. So he mentioned he bought pens at Hobby Lobby, but apparently Artisan, which is on Monson Vista, it's a specialized art store by UNM, sells all of these supplies and they'll give a discount to UNM. Yeah, Artisan. the manager name is Michael at the time. He said he had enough supply. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for everyone sharing this evening with us. Have yeah. a good night. Thank you. Thank you so very much. It's a Friday evening all together. <laughs>